has so many holes, and yet it just really didn't click with me. These are Pentel Hybrid Paper from Moro. Do you hate ads? I hate ads. You know what I love? Patreon.com slash Inkdependence, where patrons get access to a patron-only Discord, ad-free videos, and the joy of knowing they help support this channel. Hello folks, welcome to Ink Dependence. I'm Mike, and this is a little uh, little Jet Pins unboxing. Of course, I always have a cart going at Jet Pins. I may have another cart going already since I ordered this. So uh, let's go ahead and get in here and see what kind of fun stuff I found at the Jet Pins. I'm always just like, I just need some excuse to actually hit the go button on that cart. Jet Pins has such fun stuff. All right, first up, oh, these are interesting. So I have some of these Pentel hybrid uh, markers. I've got some that are in like multiple colors of shimmer and ink and all that sort of thing. These are Pentel hybrid matte hop, Mat matte hop? Matte hop -eh? I don't know, matte, matte hop gel rollers. These are supposed to have like sort of a, a, a lifted appearance to them. Uh, everything you know about gel color, high, uh, high opacity ink versus a matte opaque finish, micro hollow resin beads, which is a technology for matte and opaque pigments. I don't know what that means, but it sounds cool. Uh, writes a lot beautifully on both dark and light papers, suitable for photographing coated papers. I mean, you know, eventually it'll, it probably will take a while for that to dry. Maximum impact. Yeah, these look pretty interesting. Uh, so I went ahead and grabbed some of these. Uh, this set of four was 1050 at Jet Pens. This is color set A. I think, I guess there are a couple of other color sets. What's this other one? Oh, the other one has an orange in it. Oh, but orange, yellow, pink, and purple. Well, this is still pretty good with sort of our basic colors here and then a bright green. We will test these out uh, for sure kind of at the end. I'd like to, maybe we'll do like a we'll open stuff and then at the end we'll test out all these pens and that sort of thing. So uh, hang on, it's supposed to have like a matte sort of plasticky look to it. Uh, I'm interested to see what this ends up being like. Okay, what else do I have in here? Ah, here's a... A set of like small pens and that sort of thing is sort of like singles that I got. I love uh, finding singles of various pens. One of the things I like about going to Crazy Allen's, which is our local pen place, is they have a big old wall of single pens, and I kind of love that. So these I grabbed because I wanted something to go in a couple of my tactile turn pens. Like this one's probably going to go in the Nitro, which is a coffee themed pen uh, that was the uh, the previous seasonal. And then this one here is Aqua Blue, which I think might go really well in this here um, this here tactile turn which is the current tactile turn seasonal the uh, the ice fall so I wanted something icy to go in here and I think this might fit the bill so we'll try these out here in a minute then I also grabbed this one this is a zebra click bright highlighter and I just didn't have any highlighters like this I'm gonna give this a shot it looks like a pen it's actually got a really nice sort of pen shape to it uh, the way the point comes out is a little bit strange because it's a chisel point so you need it to be I kind of wish this was was in line. Let me see if I can line this up. Um, wow, it keeps going, doesn't it? All right, let's do line this up this way and then put the tip on. Because really, I want it to line up with the clip because that'll make it easier to. Yeah, there we go. Okay, good. And now we're in business. Now it lines up right. Good. Just take stuff apart, see what happens. So uh, yeah, we'll try this out here in just a little bit. The Click Bright from Zebra. I always like a new thing from Zebra pens. Uh, they make some really good highlighters and a lot of other stuff that I'm really into. And this is $1.75. So I'm like, yeah, let's just go ahead and give that a shot. Why not, right? And then lastly, this is something that I haven't gotten for a while uh, because I I don't love the Uniball Ones. I think they're a pretty fun pen to use and I have a bunch of them, but uh, they kind of just like, I don't know, something about them just really didn't click with me that well. Uh, but the, the ink seems good. I just didn't love the pen bodies, even though they look pretty cool. So I saw my friend Brad, the pen addict Dowdy, talking about these. And he's like, you know what really made me a, a believer is the Uniball 1P, which is this little pocket one. And I think it actually uses the standard sized... It's really unscrews, doesn't it? Yeah, it uses the standard sized uh, refill. Same size refill as the regular pens, which are like vaguely this size. But it goes in this... Like little, it must go all the way up into the top of the knock. That's really interesting the way they did that. And then it has this big metal tip at the bottom, so you get a better a better balance. So I'm looking to see how that goes. It's kind of short and thick. It's actually it's actually just on the 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 edge of where I would find it acceptable for a pocket pen. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I'm interested in seeing seeing if I like that one better. All right. 
What's this? Ah, <laughs> these I'm not going to try out. These are actually for Audrey, and it was sort of the thing that tipped me over the edge. I'm like, yeah, I do need to get this cart of things, uh, more standard type pen things. These are actually a whole mess of Coletto refills. Audrey uses the uh, the high tech C Coletto at work a whole lot for just a bunch of um, sort of like record keeping and that kind of stuff. And she actually burns through these cartridges fairly quickly. So I just went ahead and got the 18 pack with all of the colors because she just uses them, you know, all the time. And so I went ahead and got her just all of them. So yeah, high tech C Coletto, tons of different colors here. All your standard ones, like the weird ones, some like light colors. There's a couple of different pinks in there. That's interesting. Interesting. We got I uh, got a yellow one, a few different blues, another like a there's three pinks actually in this collection. How about that? So anyway, this will go straight to Audrey. I'm not going to try these out because once you un uncap the little ball on the end, they do kind of like you know start to like it starts the aging of the of the ink or whatever of the cartridge. So. We'll just leave those for Audrey to take to work with her. But yeah, she loves these high tech C's. They're a really good multi pin body. And uh, she's gone through at least one of these packs plus a bunch of singles. So, you know, the pack is kind of the way to go. Oh, this. So I, I have paper out here, but I'm just going to use this. This is a new paper from Moraman, and it's one that I had just heard of like the day I was going to put this order in. Somebody's like, oh, hey, have you tried this? Um, this Moraman, what was it? Gyrus? Gyr got gy gyrus dude i don't know that is a that is a heck of a word for my my american mouth to pronounce uh something in italian means a, a vow or declaration to god the meaning of ism is philosophy okay so gyrus is a coined term based on these two words this is a t coin term coined to connote the guidelines of a business person's notions and deeds gyare gyareism gyrus interesting that's a really that's a that's a heck of a word. So uh, I went ahead and got a bunch of loose leaf sheets of this. I kind of think it'll fit pretty well in my plotter, which is new. Let's make sure these uh, these line up. But I kind of think they will. It's got a million holes in it, so you'd think it would line up with some of these, right? Yeah, I think it'll fit in there just fine, actually. So I'll throw a few of those in there. But we will uh, we'll try out some of our our pens and stuff that we just got on one of these as well because. Uh, you know, why not? It's supposed to be their like highest quality paper, I think. It's their, it says here on the JetPen site, uh, this is their Mormon's highest quality notebook paper. Smooth texture, great for use with fountain pens, provides a pleasant writing experience. 20 holes spaced approximately 9.7 millimeters apart from center to center. Two of the holes are enlarged for use as European style two ring binders. Oh, that's why you have the big one here. Yeah, yeah, the big one's here and here. Let's see, here I can see them. I don't know. I think it'll fit. It looks like it'll fit. We'll see. We'll see here in a minute. But some Juris paper. That's fun. I totally forgot I got that. But uh, I love Mormon paper. So their best paper. I'm into it. Oh, and and more. <laughs> Look, I kind of I kind of went hard on the singles this time. All right. So these are some uh, jelly rolls, and I love jelly rolls. I have a lot of Sakura jelly rolls. It's one of those things. Like as soon as they come out with a new jelly roll, I've got to I've got to try one or two. And some of these are really interesting ones. So I said before there were some of these that were like uh, sort of raised. Um, these are souffles and the souffle ones are supposed to give a unique 3d ink that leaves a pastel like raised line you can see and feel, uh, they're supposed to write on regular paper as well as non-porous surfaces like glass, plastic, and metal. Really interesting. So it's waterproof on most surfaces, water-based, odorless, and AP certified non-toxic. How about that? Best effect, write slowly to allow a thick line to, uh, of ink to form and allow the ink to dry completely, which can take up to 10 minutes on some surfaces. Wow, the ink is thick and slow to dry. It's not for, ideal for extended writing. The raised effect works best on non-porous, clean, smooth surfaces and be, can be crushed down by pressing on it. That's kind of fascinating. So cool. All right, so I got a few of these in... Uh, so these three actually are the souffle ones. I got this like light orange, a gray, and then white because sometimes I need to write on a dark paper. And uh, I've I found that sometimes like it's hard to get a pen that will write on a, on, a, on a dark paper like that. So yeah, we're going to try these out. This will be interesting. I got, We can write on some plastic. Heck, we can write on this actually. It'll probably work. And then this one is another one. This is from the Glaze Collection, which I was not really aware of the Glaze Collection. But this is another one that's supposed to leave a 3D glossy raised line. So I guess just kind of a different effect than these. These look like they're kind of matte. And this one, I guess, is glossy. So interesting. Interesting. This one's in hunter green. So this ought to be pretty fun. We'll see how these how these look. So we have these are souffle and this is 
Let's say glaze. Interesting. So I, I got some of these for sure. These are like two bucks a piece. So uh, it's easy to collect a whole bunch of them over time <laughs> is one of the ways that it's how they get you. All right, let's see what's in here. I can see one of the things in here. This is something I'm going to be taking to work. Oops. Oops. Okay. All right, cool. So the first thing here uh, are these, and this is uh, Nihon Rikigaku chalk. I have been using the white version of this chalk in my classrooms this semester because I have this really nice blackboard. It's actually black and not green or something. And this chalk is really, really good in uh, the white form. I don't have a chalkboard here to test this out, but I'll try to remember to test this out um, later this week on uh, a real chalkboard and show you what it ends up looking like because I'm curious how the colors work out as well as the white ones. The white ones are a very nice line. They're smooth. They don't have like that horrible squeak. Um, yeah, so these look pretty cool and I'm into this. I, I, I don't really like chalk, but I have really liked the white version of this chalk. So uh, this one is 350 for six colors. So that'll last me quite a while actually at my usage rate. So totally fine for 350. The white ones are three bucks for six sticks. So um, yeah, very economical, I think, for chalk there. Uh, and then <laughs> and I had to get this because just look at this little guy right here. I mean, this is a mind wave sticky note set and they come and they like have a little pop up. I actually have this one that I keep uh, near my desk. This is a nice little squirrel and you can write on his belly and then stick it to things, which is just kind of really fun to me. And this one is just a little stingray, but you uh, you kind of do it like this and you can set it on your desk thusly so that people can earth. So, so A, you can see its cuteness and also you can just like rip off one and put on something or write a note on it, which is very useful to be able to do. Uh, and uh, I think this is like really fun. Oh, you can also flip it the other way and just close it up for, for carrying it around with you. That's a pretty good tip. So I got this, went ahead and got this little uh, little stingray here. This is like 385, but I think worth every penny. And these are pretty good with uh, all kinds of pens. They're not perfect with fountain pens as I remember, but pretty good. And then lastly, I've had one of these in my tray for quite a while. This is from High Tide. These are made of melamine, which is an interesting material. These, uh, this one's marbled. They come in like several different colors of various kinds. This was 15 bucks, so not the cheapest thing ever, but it is a nice little tray. Uh, oh, QC passed. Well, that's good. Uh, this tray is for is a stationary. <laughs> this tray is a stationary. Do not use it for serving food. Marble pattern could vary in shape and color, of course. Take care not to apply impacts from dropping or hitting the product during handling. Prevent deformation, not put in places where you're exposed to directly sunlight or around fire or is exposed to water for long hours. Interesting. So yeah, this is uh this is an interesting little tray. I was thinking I could use it for well, all kinds of things. Like it's, you know, it would be pretty perfectly fine for throwing pens in, but also maybe for some photographies or that sort of thing, just kind of like uh I don't know. I, I wasn't really sure exactly what I'd use this for, but it seems fun. So like, I don't know, maybe I'll throw like stamps in it or something. I mean, who who even knows? It could it could hold so many things. So, you can put a little dragon in it if you want and your fidget toys. Uh, maybe it just goes in there. I, I don't know. Throw your rings in it by your bedside table, whatever, uh, whatever you like. I think this can, this can hold that stuff. It's very smooth. So I'm not worried about it, um, hurting my pens or anything. Uh, so yeah, it seems pretty cool. Marbled melamine for your workplace or entry. Yeah. Interesting what it said about water. I wonder if it will kind of like soak up water. I don't really know what melamine is. Does it say? No, I don't know. Let me Google it right quick. Really interesting. So it's used for all kinds of things, and uh, it's combined with formaldehyde and other agents to produce a, to produce melamine resins. Um, also, it's like a it's a part of formica, which is interesting. So I don't know. You can use it in decorative dinnerware and laminate flooring and dry erase boards. Um, it's not microwave safe, but looks like it has so many uses. Plus, it's just kind of like really interesting looking. So I went ahead and grabbed one of these because, like, you know, why not? Sometimes you just gotta have a place to throw all your stuff while you're while you're doing that and throw your post-it notes in there and all that kind of jazz uh these little trays can be very useful for somebody just who is trying to stay uh, a little bit organized like i am okay so if you're into seeing how these work stick around if not hey that's the unboxing that's the that's the haul here a whole bunch of different like weird standard pens of like uh, weird pens and like standard pens of various kinds some chalk a very cool stingray here for me to write notes on and uh, this this new Juris paper. So let's see how it goes. Uh, I'm going to unwrap this, get a couple of sheets out so we can try a bunch of pens and all that kind of stuff on it. So uh, I'll, I'll be right back. 
Okay, so here's the paper. Let's see if it'll if it'll hang out in my um, my plotter notebook here. I think it'll fit. I mean, this has got a million holes in it. It's got a some of them have got to line up, right? With with these six rings. <laughs> it has so many holes, and yet it doesn't it doesn't actually line up. That is kind of a bummer. I mean, I'm still going to use it, but uh, it does not line up with, huh? doesn't line up with these. It's really weird. What if I put on this one? Can I scooch it? No. Huh. Yeah, it doesn't line up with six hole punch, which is weird because there are a million holes. So many holes. Well, bummer. But, you know, I mean, I guess I have a six hole punch. I could make it fit by punching extra holes. But I mean, it probably just enlarge some of these holes. That's weird. Actually, let's just see what happens when I do that. Right, so here's my six hole punch. Um, let's is this just one sheet? This is a heavy paper. What's the weight of this stuff? 50 sheets, high quality, A5, 20 holes. Hmm. Doesn't actually give a weight. Oh, there it is. It's 90 GS, 90 GM squared. That's, that's, this feels heavier than 90, but it's pretty thick. All right. Take this out. <laughs> I mean, like they're a little bit off the holes there, but let's just see what happens. It looks wonky. Probably didn't compromise the integrity too much, though. Yeah, I mean, that works. Just has to re-punch the holes, um, which is kind of weird. But I mean, it does work. So, yeah, I mean, you can throw it in your six ring if you want to re-punch some holes. I think that's that's a possibility. I might throw some in there. Throw some in there. Now I don't think I'm able to use this like ring systems, like a William Hanna or something, but it will work with this plotter, and so it'll work with other things as well. So interesting. Okay, let's try out some some pens here. All right, this is the Juice in Coffee Brown. All right, so there's our uh, our Juice pens. I really like the Juice. I think it's uh, just kind of a, a slightly better version of the G2. It's unfortunate you can't find the Juice just everywhere because I think this would take over, absolutely. I like the 0.5s a lot with these. The 0.7 is a little bit on the large side, I think, but uh, I couldn't find the, uh, the blue one I wanted in the 0.5, so I went for the 0.7, and I think that'll be totally fine. It's going to go real nicely with this ice fall. I think it's going to be like writing with ice. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm liking that. I think it'll be pretty cool. So yeah, there we go. That's going to be cool. The juice. Uh, next up, let's try out this highlighter. This is a pretty dark green for a highlighter. Let's do a little bit of um, writing right quick. Let me find a ballpoint. Ew, it kind of, oh, weird. That kind of melted on me. That is... That is unusual. This is a very broad point, uh, broad point ballpoint, and it's got like goop when it first came out. That's that's not great. Uh, let me look at this real quick. All right, is this still? That's pretty okay. All right, let's give it a shot. I mean, it's a highlighter; it'll be fine. I mean, it highlights okay. I'm not like losing the text in there, but I will say this is a very, very fine point highlighter. Extremely fine. Does it say it's going to be this fine on here anywhere? No, it really doesn't. But very, very fine. In fact. Be easy to go like this and just like do underlines. Even the broad point is pretty small. So yeah, there's the Z grip. Uh, this is another pilot. I I I don't know. This is, oh, this is Z grip. What is this? Oh, this is the click bright. That's right. And this is the Z grip. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know why this did that weird goopy thing. I haven't used that pen in a little while. So maybe that's why. Who knows? All right, let's try out this uh, this uni. Yeah, Uniball one. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know uh, I know Brad really liked this one. I think it's kind of too short and the the body is weirdly smooth. I want this to have a, a different texture on it. So this is a regular Uniball one and it's got a uh, it's got a sort of grippy texture here in the grip section, which uh, what size is this? Is something different? No, it's just another 0.5. Although I will say it writes a heck of a lot better than my current 0.5s. I've never really liked the ink in these because they just didn't feel good, but maybe I just got bad ones. I don't know. It's kind of it's kind of strange. Maybe we just need to get going a little bit. It seems like it's pretty okay. It seems like it's pretty okay now. This one writes better just off the bat, but I don't I don't know why they wouldn't have made this grippy like they made the regular one. That's a 
that's a big misstep. We'll see how this goes. This is 650, so it's fairly expensive for a single, just a single gel pen. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna carry it around and use it. I'm not gonna let my first impression throw it right under the bus, but uh, its first impression is not great. I really want this to be grippier, and it's it feels slippery. Like I'm I feel like I'm gonna lose it, especially since it's so short. Strange. All right, let's use some of these weirdo souffles and stuff, and then we'll switch over to the matte ones. Oh, these have a little. A little ball on the tip. I haven't seen that before. I'm probably not gonna be able to see this one. I can actually you can see it in the camera okay because of the lighting. Interesting that you can see it in the lighting. I can't really see what I'm writing here as I go. Let me find a dark thing to write on. Of course, now I won't be able to find the dark piece of paper I was trying to write on. So we'll try out this this old mastermind cover. So they weren't kidding when they said write slowly. This is something that really wants you to write very slowly in order to get the color. So we'll see how that dries. That might take a while, so I'm just gonna set it aside uh, so I don't touch it too much. So if I can just, let's put it up here in the corner. We'll see how it goes. It's really interesting with these. Um, the ink is much more liquidy than it is in the other jelly rolls that I've used, and I've got a whole bunch of jelly rolls. Uh, and you can sort of feel the ball push into the tip when you press it down, kind of like you're writing with a paint marker. These are very paint markery so far. Uh, I sped up writing the orange bit there just to see uh, what would happen if I wrote more quickly. And it does seem like it writes pretty well, but uh, it's definitely a lot lighter because not as much of the uh, the ink is coming out on the page. And then lastly, Hunter Green. Okay, these are weird. Uh, so is this one dry yet? I don't think, I don't think this one's dried yet. Uh, but you can totally see that it is drying. I think some of these, the white area maybe is where it's dry. Let me poke it. Yeah, the white area seems pretty dry. I think it's still drying on the interior, so I'm gonna let that go a bit. I went ahead and did um, Hunter Gray and Orange there as well, just for funsies. Uh, or Hunter, whoops, Hunter Gray and Orange. And uh, those are gonna take a little while to dry, but you can see them, especially the orange as it dries. It's definitely turning an interesting color. All right, so how'd it do on the paper? So the top three I can definitely see are actually dry. The Hunter Green is the newest one and it's still kind of taking its time, as you can see uh, there. It's just still like kind of wet, but let's see if I can feel the other ones. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can absolutely feel them. Whoa. It's like puff paint almost. It's kind of like a puff paint situation. Now instead of like you can flatten it if you squish it. So I'm gonna squish it with a fingernail. I don't know. I mean, it didn't seem to have much of an effect when I squished it, if I'm honest. It's kind of like I don't think it I don't think it did anything. But yeah, this is <laughs> this is interesting for a pen. These are much more these are much more like a paint pen than they are like a standard rollerball or a gel pen. Let me grab a regular jelly roll just for funsies. All right, so this is from the uh, the Moonlight set, which is supposed to be good on light or dark papers. So the Moonlight ones are a really interesting set of colors. I really like this gray a lot, although you can see, I was kind of like giving a little bit of a press to see if I could get that same feeling as I got from the other ones, where you can feel the ball like going into the body a little bit, so maybe it let out more ink. It didn't, it just kind of made it railroad. Also, this is a pretty heavy paper, and so pressing down into it, I think is enough to make it railroad a little bit. But uh, you can see here on like the MM, I really let off the pressure. You can see just it's like a really nice, really nice color there. So Hunter Green, I think is still drying. Let me, let me see. Oh, well, actually I think it's, no, it's dry. It's just very glossy. Oh, that's interesting. So it doesn't, it's not smearing as you can see, but I can totally feel it. I can totally feel it on the finger. I thought maybe I got it to smear a little bit, but. Not really. I think I just had a lot of ink there on the, the G and the E, and it's just like very glossy. That is interesting, and it's working just fine on here. I haven't had any bleed through of any kind. This is a pretty powerful paper. Let's throw some other stuff at it. Like here's a double broad SIG uh, with um, Tasha, uh, Tasha Corinth Pink. 
I've definitely had Corinth Pink do some uh, spreading and feathering and that kind of stuff for me, uh, but this paper looks like it's really handling it. This is Wearing Ghoul Path, which is very shimmery. Uh, what else do I have around here? This is one called Bumbling Blossom from Ferris Wheel Press. Yeah. There's another shimmery ink, but it doesn't have nearly as much shimmer as that Wearing Ghoul does. That thing is mostly shimmer. Let's go ahead and give it uh, a ball point and a roller ball too. So this is the um, this is the jet stream. And this should be the regular roller ball. Yeah, it handles all of these really well. Here's a here's a pencil. This is a Uniball Kuratoga pencil. Yeah, interesting. So this paper is very uh, it's very cushiony, and so I can really feel the pencil like kind of squooshing into the paper. It's a very I mean it's very thick. You can see it. I can, yeah, you can see this is quite a thick paper here. Man, I need some lotion in my hands when I get that close. But yeah, interesting. I really. I think this is an interesting set of things. I didn't have any kind of bleed through here on the back. It doesn't look like, well, take that back. There's a little point here, and a little point there, and a little point there, but I mean, that's pretty good. In fact, the, the roller ball looks like it came closest, or maybe it's just the darkest of those inks. I don't know, but a little bit of show through maybe, but no bleed or anything. And it really held up well to these super wet like glazes and stuff. So yeah, pretty good, pretty good. All right. I'm pretty happy with all these right off the bat, except for this one P, which I wish was grippy down here where it's slippery. I, I don't know why you wouldn't make this. Why wouldn't you make this kind of rubbery? That's you've got rubbery technology. Give me this grip. This feels like a very sure grip. I just don't love the, the refill, but this one, the refill seems better and the grip is slippery. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see how it goes, how, how it grows on me. But interesting set of things. This paper is very nice, quite thick, though, and weirdly doesn't fit in my six ring until I punch extra holes in it. But yeah, I'm pretty uh, I'm pretty psyched about this. Uh, this set of this set of goods I got here. These are these are all fun little pins, and I think they're all bringing something interesting to the table. So looking forward to trying this chalk on some chalkboards. And, uh, you know, until the, oh wait, let's look at it on this paper. How did this do now? Did it ever dry? Oh it, did. oh, it feels weird. Oh, how about these? Are these dry? Oh, they did dry. So it's, a, it's, I can't really tell when they're dry because of how glisteny they are. But wow, that's, this looks like blood. <laughs> like, like I wrote the word hunter just in blood or something. Uh, the orange dried out very nice. I think I would need to write much more slowly. So I make sure I actually coat all of it in the orange, but that's really good. And the white, the white is really, that is a powerful white and you can feel Oh, wait, did I smush it? Oh, I smushed it. I got down to a layer that wasn't fully, that was not fully dry. So yeah, maybe it needed 10 minutes. The outside was dry until I pushed on it. It was okay. But then I pushed on it and I smeared it. So yeah, let this dry longer than you think it's going to need. But wow, it feels rubbery. It feels like I wrote with like a rubber pen or something. That is, that's kind of fascinating. So yeah, interesting stuff, those jelly rolls. All right, there you go. Thanks very much for uh, hanging out with me for this fun little haul. Uh, I hope you, uh, oh, I didn't try these. All right, hold on, let me get these, whoops. All right, I'm gonna write with all of these just to like, um, and like speed it up a little bit, so. Okay, so these are supposed to be opaque and vibrant colors that are that then turn matte. Uh, and I think that is pretty good. These dry? Yeah, these dried. And I totally can feel them as I touch them uh, on the paper. Let's see if I can show. Not really, not really. All right, so of these four, I think the green one actually needed a little bit more time to get going. That one could have used a little bit of extra time. Seems like it's just a little bit more reticent than the other ones, not quite as wet perhaps. But green, uh, for whatever reason, can be tough for pens. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Mr. Nose. Do you, hear we were, do you hear we were done here? Anyone want to come help out? Uh, do they bleed through? No, no bleeding through or even showing through. So yeah, quite good. Uh, these are interesting colors. I think these are going to be something that I write with on a fairly regular basis because they look neat and they feel neat. So yeah, really cool. All right, now I'm done. I'm glad I looked over there and saw that extra, that extra set of pens because I wouldn't have tried those otherwise. So yeah, this paper really kicks butt. Very good stuff from Mormon. I like their paper a lot. And this is no exception. Uh, so from Mr. Nose and I, thanks very much for watching. Hey, buddy, how's it going? Let me just finish up talking to the folks, okay? Uh, from Mr. Nose and I, thanks for very much for hanging out with me and checking out this little uh, this little haul of uh, weirdo pens and interesting things.
things from jet pens uh i will see y'all in another video soon and until then think about what you put out in the world make it a better place peace out